Hey, what's up? Welcome to United Online. My name is Lucas. We are in a brand new message series called The Sex Series. We're talking about love. We're talking about dating. We're talking about relationships. And we're even talking about sex. Enjoy today's message. <laughs> Right. Hey, can we appreciate the worship team leading us in the presence of God? That was awesome. That was awesome. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to everybody that is here for the first time. Can we put our hands together and welcome all of them? Especially my Lowville friends. What's up? Make some noise. I'm repping my Lowville shirt. I'm a, did, did Hadessa tell you? I graduated from there, you know, the O2 team. My picture's in there. I'm like in the front, you know, little, little, the little guy, you know, that was me. And then um, after service, Frankie challenged, um, it's Frankie, right? So it's the, the Lowville, they brought like their own volleyball team tonight. And so we're going to play full court volleyball after. And it's going to be Lowville verse. So we're going to put our best team against however many they are. And so we'll see how it goes after, after service. And girls, if it doesn't go well, you can blame Frankie. All right? Does that work? Does that work? Okay. Also, um, also I think this is interesting that, uh, that if you're here for the first time, uh, maybe you didn't know, maybe Hadessa didn't tell you, but we're in a series uh, called the Sex Series, all right, where we're talking about dating, relationships, and sex. Yes, and so we don't always talk about this. This isn't like a 52-week series, you know, where we talk about sex every single week, but uh, we are going to talk about it tonight, and so tonight we're going to kind of round third. We're going to get into some deep stuff, uh, some heavier stuff tonight, so uh, I'm excited for it. So, quick recap on where we are. This is Sex Series Part 5. Are y'all ready? Sex Series Part 5. When it comes to relationships, here's what we say. That you've got to let the one who designed them define them. You've got to let the one who designed them define them. Okay? Relationships are God's idea. Sex is God's design. So, we've got to look at his blueprint, we've got to look at what the Bible says when it comes to these things. Because if we're not careful, we can let culture tell us what is right and what is wrong. And culture's definition of dating and relationships looks like this. Two people in an intimate relationship. It may be sexual, but it doesn't have to be. It could be serious. It could be casual. It could be straight. It could be gay. It could be monogamous. It could be open. It could be short term or long term. Let me tell you real quick, real quick. This is a losing definition of how you do dating and relationships, how you do marriage, how you do sex. This is a lose, this is, this is culture's definition. So this is why we say that you have to let the one who designed them define them, okay? Because if we're not careful, we will adopt this definition. And this is not God's definition of dating, sex, and marriage. All right? Last week I, I talked about uh, warning. You're in a bad relationship. So let's say you're in a relationship with somebody. How do you know if things are going right? And these are the top ten that we put together really quickly. I thought they were really fun. I'm not going to elaborate on them because that was last week. But I want to go through them really quick. When the other person won't take responsibility or when they will never apologize, like they never, ever apologize. Y'all know anybody like that? Okay, that's a warning sign. Like, warning, warning. When they always want control, like where they always want to control you, they always want to control the situation. When it's always, 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 always about them, it's never about you, it's never about what you want, that is not healthy. Listen, ladies, girls, 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 when he's lazy, warning sign, warning sign, all right? When they ignore boundaries, when they ignore boundaries, so when you have boundaries, these can be physical boundaries, these can be emotional boundaries, these can be, hey, you can't say that to me, you can't talk to me that way. When they ignore those boundaries, those are, that's, a, that's a bad sign. When your life directions don't line up. So in other words, like, 
you want to be uh, in ministry and this person uh, wants to uh, sell drugs, okay? Like, those things don't line up, all right? Like, you're not going in the same direction, all right? When their family, oh, this one is so good. This one's so, I thought this one was really fun. When their family is crazy and they don't know it. Let me, let me help you, let me help you. If, they, if you know that their family's crazy, but they don't know that their family's crazy, it's because they are crazy. Say amen right there. All right? All right? You got you to gotta watch, like, how the father talks to the mother, how the children talk to the mother, how the father talks to the, you know what I mean? Like, if it's crazy and they don't know, like, oh, yeah, my family's crazy. It's because they're crazy. Um, when they keep burning through relationships, in other words, like they're serial daters, like they always got to have somebody to date. Warning, I would not date that person. When they, when important values don't align, so we, we say things like uh, around here that you shouldn't be in a relationship that someone who isn't a Christian, like that should be like the, the baseline. But like if it's going to go the distance, if you're going to like go for a long time with this person, like it should be more than just uh, you know, like, how do you guys see the world? How do you guys see politics? How do you guys see this? How do you guys, see, you know what I mean? Like, Im there are important values. Like, you know, when me and Tiffany, we were talking about getting married, we talked, girls, girls, right here. When we talked about, like, how, how many kids we want, how we want to spend our money, where we want to live, all those different things. Are you all with me? So those things have to align. Also, here's a great one. When your inner circle is concerned, like, hey, I just want to let you know, I don't think that this is a good relationship for you. When everybody is telling you that, listen. Amen? All right, so those were the top ten. Tonight, we're going to talk about sex. So we've been talking uh, throughout this series about dating. We've been talking about relationships. We've been talking about all these different things. But tonight, we're going to talk about sex. This is great. Welcome to youth ministry. Welcome to youth ministry. So, what's up? You made it. They didn't put you in prison? Not yet. All right, you're just in time for the sex talk. All right, so the danger of sex. So throughout this entire series, we call this series the sex series, but we've been really talking about dating We've been talking about relationships, but tonight we're going to talk a little bit about sex. So here we go. Genesis chapter 2, it says, The Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and when the man slept, the Lord God took out of the man's rib and closed the opening. And the Lord God made woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. And at last, he said, This is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, and she will be called woman, because she was taken from man. Verse 24, this explains why a man, say man, leaves a father and is joined to his wife. So girls, 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 don't date boys. Boys want to hang on to their mamas. They can't leave their mama's house, you know what I'm saying? Date men. Look for men. Oh, it's a great thing. I'm a mama's boy, but I'm not a boy. You know what I mean? All right, here we go, here we go. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife. And the two, say this with me, say united. Say it with me, say united into one. All right, and this, now the man and his wife were naked and they felt no shame. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. All right, so listen to me, look, look at. This is the biblical definition of marriage. This is one man, one woman, married in the sight of God, united as one. So here's what I want you to know. If you're new, it's not like this every week. It's about to be heavy. Are you, are you ready? Any sex outside of biblical marriage is sin. Like, dang. 
He's going to say that. Any sex, let me say it like this. Any sex outside of biblical marriage is sin. So what do I mean by that? I mean that if you are a Christian and you call yourself a follower of Jesus, then any type of sex outside of the biblical definition of marriage is sin. Marriage is what brings us, right, together. God created sex and then he created the boundaries that he wanted it to operate in and they are to operate inside of biblical marriage. So like what is any type of sex outside of biblical marriage? Anything. So let me say it like this. Inside of biblical marriage, as long as a husband and wife are cons consenting, there are no boundaries. Like, it's all fair game. You're married. You want to wear costumes? Go for it. If you're married, like, as long as both parties are cool, you want to use whipped cream? Like, go for it. Listen to me. Look at me. Look, 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 look. If you're married and you want to send weird pictures, go for it. If you're married and you want to talk dirty through text message, go for it. More power to you. But any sex outside of biblical marriage, husband and wife, one man, one woman, is sin. Right? So like, like pornography is sex outside of biblical marriage. It's sinful. Are y'all with me? Heterosexual and homosexual. It is outside of God's design for marriage. It is Sex outside of God's biblical definition of marriage. Are y'all with me? Let me show you this. The dangers of, so here's what I want to do. I want to give you the why sex is dangerous, and then I'm going to give you the why it's sin. Is that okay? Andrew, that's okay with you? It's all right with Andrew. So if you have a problem, you take it up with Andrew. Okay? Here we go. Number one, there is no such thing as safe sex. Even when you practice safe sex, have you ever seen Mean Girls? You remember the scene where the gym teacher was like, if you have sex, you will get syphilis and die. You remember that? That scene, now you guys are like, I need to go watch the movie. I don't know that that's necessarily, necessarily true. It could be. But even if you practice safe sex, all right, there is no way somebody doesn't get hurt when that happens outside of marriage. Like, I can have all the safe sex I want because I'm married. <laughs> but listen, I know, like, you know, have you ever heard, like, you watch these shows and there's this idea of, like, just casual sex or, or like, hey, we're not going to have sex, like, all the way. We're just going to, like, do everything but have sexual intercourse. But we're going to do everything but. Usually when it's everything but, just usually, it's usually the guy on the receiving end making the girl always be the uncomfortable one. That is a boy behaving like a boy. I'm just telling you. There is no, like, Oh, no, 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 I'm for sure, for sure. Sex is bad, but like, you know, like I'm cool with like head. That's cool. That's great. You know what I'm saying? 
Like, I'm not saying I'm cool with that. I'm telling you, anything outside of biblical marriage is sin. Can I get an amen? Some of y'all are like, oh, my God, this is wild. Okay, number two. The dangers of sex is that there is always emotional connections that happen. And there's always emotional damage that takes place inside of a relationship. Sex is dangerous. And, and you, I'm not just talking about, like, intercourse. I'm talking about anything. Wondering hands and all this. And you're nasty. There is always an emotional connection. Even if you think, how do I want to say it? Even if you feel like this means nothing to me, you cannot guarantee this means nothing to the other person. And if it means absolutely nothing to both of you and you're consensual, like this means absolutely nothing to both of us, then sex has made you so callous that you'll never be able to connect with somebody deeply and intimately the way God has made you. If, if sex makes you so callous that you can just flippantly have it with anybody, then you are not ever going to engage in it properly the way God created for you to have it between one person for the rest of your life. There is always emotional damage that comes. There's always social damage that comes. Y'all know bro code? You know bro code? Bro code is like when a bro dates a girl, the code is like, bro, you can't date her because I do. Right? Or, like, there's always social damage that happens. Like, I, I used to say, I, I say it like this. There's a couple things that can ruin, like, Dudes who are best friends. One is money. Y'all ain't there yet. Number two is a football or a basketball. You know what I mean? Like sports. And number three is a girl. That's the truth. That's the truth. It'll ruin friendships. So there's always social damage. In other words, in other words, when you're like, I'm trying to behave. <laughs> trying. So like when you engage in a sexual relationship and then your friends begin to know about it and your friends aren't sexual yet. And then you break up. Then, then there's like an expectation like, oh, if you're in relationship with this person, this is how far they've gone. You can go that far with that person. Or they look at you like, oh, you're the first to lose your virginity. Or you're the one that sleeps with every. You know what I'm saying? There's always social damage that comes with it. Always. Amen? I'm trying to figure out, like, things I should tell you or not. So it was like this, like when I was growing up and I was in high school, I wasn't always a Jesus man. So you would come in and like, and the, by the time you came to school on Monday, you knew what people did with who on the weekend. You know what I'm saying? It's like, there's always damage with it. Number four, here's the really, really bad thing that happens. Is that there is so full, this is the most damaging part that happens. So you remember in the Bible where it says that the two are united into the two were united into how did that happen? Through sex. Thank you. Every time you engage in sex, there is a uniting that happens with you and that person. And I'm not specifically talking about intercourse, but it happens through intercourse. But any time you engage in sex, there is a two that becomes one in that moment. In other words, your soul is so united and so entangled with that other person. You, you are behaving as if you're married, but you're not married. And you are giving yourself to another person. The two are becoming one. Whenever, listen to me. If you are a gal, if you're a gal in the room, okay, uh, we have this huge influx of estrogen in the room tonight. So it's just wonderful. It's just 
fantastic. It's great. Uh, we need like the football team to come now, you know. But uh, but for tonight we'll deal with it. Um, but when you're a gal, uh, the first time that, uh, that, you, that it's never comfortable the first time you step out of your comfort zone in any kind of sexual context. Right? Like the first time you kiss, it's like, oh my God, we kissed, it was great. And then you're like, all this stupid stuff, you know. But then you're like, oh, then you know, other dumb things happen. There's always, anytime you step across a line, a boundary, when you emotionally, soulfully connect with another person, you are uniting and joining yourself to that person. The two are behaving as one. They're coming together as one. And there is a deep, soulful connection that happens. And then when the relationship is terminated, there is a severe break that happens. It's like, a, it's like you're practicing for divorce when you're 14 years old. Are you with me? Number five, not to mention, like, when I was in youth church, my youth pastor tried to tell me, like, scare me to not have sex. You know what I mean? Like, if you have sex, you will get pregnant. And, uh, no, not me, not me. You know, like, like. But not to mention the, the massive responsibility that comes. Listen to me, listen to me. If I have sex and I get a girl pregnant, if I get my wife pregnant, no problem. If you have sex and you get a girl pregnant, you got major problems. I have a minivan. I'm okay. I just put that little child just right in there next to the other ones. Anna Marie, where is she? Where is she? Where is she? Y'all know Anna Marie? She's right there. There's nine brothers and sisters. Eight. Okay, sorry. There's nine of y'all. Heaven forbid. Nine of them. When her mom and dad just kept having kids, they could responsibly handle it, apparently. You have sex and you have a kid, you're the, that's a lot of responsibility. Are you with me? Not to mention, like, like when I tell you that my youth pastor tried to scare me, it was like, you're for sure going to contract some kind of sexually transmitted. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so I'm not going to try and scare you to not have sex. I think... Reasons one through four are really, really good. But number five is, like, you can't ignore the responsibility that it comes when you engage in sex. Like, when, I hate to do this, but um, when I was in high school, and I fooled around with this girl, and then she called me and told me that she was late on her period. Like, I found Jesus, like, super duper fast, you know what I mean? Like, Jesus I'm going to die. My parents are going to kill me. Because I was not ready for the responsibility. You find God real fast when you acted like an idiot when you ignore one through four. You see what I'm saying? I have no other children outside of my children. Just, I'd just like to make that clear. Okay. I was, I, was, I was good. But you know what I mean? Like, you cross a line. I want you not ready when you're 16 or 17 or 18 or 24. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just don't have sex ever until you're married. But if you're 16 and married, go for it, baby. All right, boundaries. All right, so here, here's what you have to understand. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and wrap up. Boundaries should be stated and agreed upon. So, like, how far, so here's a question I get. Pastor Luke, how far is too far? I think I have a pretty good answer. Guys are nasty. All right? Like, a brisk wind can turn a guy on. So, they're nasty. So, girls, you got to help us out in this area. Okay? But anything that engages your sex drive in my opinion, is too far. So it's like, is making out a sin? Like, if you make out with a dude, he is for sure wanting to hump. You know what I mean? Like, that's just the way it goes, you know? 
who said, I'm not saying every guaranteed time, but I'm telling you. All right? And guys have a terrible time hiding when they're turned on. Y'all been the health class, haven't you? They teach this in like fifth grade. All right. I think if you're like getting turned on, listen, if you're standing up and you're making out and then you want to lie down and continue to make out, it's too far. If your hands are moving up her back or down her pants or girls, I don't know, you girls are nasty too. You know what I mean? Like, can you behave? <laughs> girls, like, listen to me. Girls, help a brother out. Not this brother, but just help your help boys out. Like, don't unbutton guys' shirts. Don't play with their drawstrings. Don't play with their ears. I mean, just don't do anything. Put your hair in a bun and just behave for God's sakes. You know what I mean? Like, like. Girls could be like, hey, and guys are like, yes, let's go. I don't know what it means, but I'm there. You know what I mean? Like, boundaries need to be stated and agreed upon. Right? Here's what it says. Husbands, I love the Bible. You got to read this thing. Husbands should fulfill his wife's sexual needs. And wives should fulfill their husband's sexual needs. The wife gives authority of her body to her husband. And husbands give authority to his body over to his wife. Every time you engage in sex outside of marriage, you are giving authority of yourself over to the other person. Because sex was designed for marriage. And anytime sex happens, you're giving authority over to the other person. And when you engage in sex outside of marriage, you are giving authority over your body to the other person. You know when people say things like, I own you. You can do, I, you'll do anything I tell you to do. Why? It's because you are engaging in, and I'm not just talking about intercourse. I'm talking about any kind of sex. Amen? Look at 1 Corinthians. Here, all right, so how do I deal with this, Pastor Luke? You run from sexual sin. You know how you are, um, sometimes you think you can be in an atmosphere and you're strong enough to not succumb to the temptation. It doesn't work that way when it comes to sex. The Bible says to withstand from all types of evil, but when it comes to sex, it says, run. All right, real quick, real quick. So here's the question. Why is sex before marriage a sin? Have you ever, ever wondered that? Like, okay, the Bible says don't do it. Sure. But why? God says give marriage, give honor to marriage, and remain faithful to another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. Another, another translation says give honor to the marriage bed. Give honor to the marriage bed. So anytime, listen to me, anytime you practice sex outside of marriage with the person that you are not married to, you are cheating on yourself, you're cheating on your future spouse with someone else. You are practicing for divorce, you're not practicing for marriage. Because marriage, because sex was given as a gift in the confines of marriage. Amen? Lastly, lastly, a man leaves his father and his woman and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one, and this is a mystery, but it is an illustration. Say illustration. Oh, my God. Have I lost all of you? Say illustration. Illustration, illustration of the way Christ and the church are united as one. So I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Listen, why sex? Is what, what was the question we we're answering? Why sex before marriage is a sin is right here. Because our relationship is an illustration of Christ's relationship with his bride. And God is faithful to his people. And anytime we engage in sex outside of marriage, we are behaving as an unfaithful bride 
to our future spouse. So if marriage is an illustration of the way Christ loves the church and is faithful to his bride, then marriage is a picture of our relationship with Christ. So every time I love my wife the way Christ loves the church, I am showing the world this is what it's going to look like when Christ loves his bride, the church. But anytime I am unfaithful to my wife, I am projecting to the world that God is not a faithful God to his bride or to his people. Do y'all see it? It is an image, it is an illustration of our relationship with Christ. Christ is a faithful husband to his bride, the church. When we engage in sex outside of marriage, it is like we are saying that we are not faithful when God is faithful. If it was given as an illustration to show that God is faithful, then we've got to practice safe sex inside the biblical definition of marriage between one man and one woman and holy matrimony, death do us part. Amen? Come on, say amen right there. Can we thank God for his word?